Hey everybody, so uh, I'm still working on my uh, frost grave table, my modular frost grave ruins. Um, there's, there's more and more of it all the time. <laughs> um, so this time I've got some 3D printed stuff. Um, I uh, downloaded a few models off of Thingiverse. Uh, for, if you don't know, Thingiverse is just kind of like an online library of everything 3D printable. Uh, if you go on there and you just look up the hashtag Frostgrave or Mordheim or 40k or DoD, um, there's just there's a ton of stuff that comes up. A lot of people get supported through like Patreon or um, or they just do it for fun, just because they have something, some model that they design and then they upload it. Um, so I printed some stuff, and uh, I one of my issues with 3D printing is the layer lines. I hate the layer lines. It's like it drives me crazy when I look at a piece and it's like a really cool design and then just... So I, I know some tricks to get rid of them. So I'm going to show you some tricks to uh, get some pretty convincing looking stone effects from your uh, 3D prints if you want to do some ruins or something like that. Considering that how long it takes to print things, like both of these models that I printed took about three hours to print. And one of them is larger, very low fidelity print. And one of them is a smaller, kind of high fidelity print. So uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll do some painting. So uh, I have a couple of these 3D prints that um, uh, basically for, for one reason or another, I want to texture them and get, get some better um, kind of stone texture on these guys. Like this, um, this is just a little, I don't know, like a little burial mound thing. Um, and uh, these are all free, by the way. I got these off Thingiverse. But this guy, um, I scaled him up a little bit. Um, I've been sort of transitioning over to 32 mil stuff. And this is not supposed to be that scale, I don't think. So it has, um, it does have like texture on it, um, but it's, you know, it, it has the, the kind of lumpy, bumpy ridges. So I'm gonna do a few things. Um, so first off, this is PLA, which is a type of plastic, polylactic acid or polylactic something. Um, acetate. Mm. Um, but it's a type of material that it's it's a, well probably the best type of material for hobbyists, people like us who want to use this stuff to make like terrain or things like that for three D printing. Um, there you cannot smooth this stuff. You you uh, types there's different types of plastic where you can use like acetone or you can use certain things to um, take some of the, the bumps out to get rid of the ridges. But with PLA, you can't really do that. You kind of just have to deal with it. Um, so there are things that we can do though that are pretty straightforward, pretty simple to uh, add texture to things like this. Like you can see, this is a little bit cartoony. Um, like these cracks and things that I just want to, I don't want to dry brush it and then have this, uh, the ridges pop out and I don't want to have like cartoony kind of looking cracks and things like that. So, and then these, this guy actually, these are supports they're just sort of welded right to it. Um, right to the, there's there's supposed to be more texture in here, like these stones that are kind of behind these, but I can't get these supports off because they're just too close. They're just kind of welded on there. So I'm just gonna sculpt into them. Uh, so yeah, first there's a, there's a few things that we can do. First off, I am going to use a wood burning tool. All right, so uh, first off, um, I have a wood burning tool. 
So I'm just gonna use this guy, like you can use the edge of it to kind of smooth things out to get some, uh, you know, if you have roughness or you can use like the blade edge side to kind of like just cut in, add a little bit of texture. Like on these guys I want to make, I wanna um, make some little stones and I kind of want to smooth out the lines. I'm not too, too worried about that um, because um, I can, um, basically I'm gonna use some uh, filler primer to, uh, to do that later to smooth out all the lines and then I'm gonna add something else that's gonna put some texture over the top of that. But this is a good way to, uh, if you want to carve into things or just smooth things out or even get rid of like little little stringies and stuff like that if you have little um you know little bits and bobs kind of sticking out from like supports and things like that it's a good way to, to get rid of those and normally with PLA if people want to get it smooth it involves a lot of sanding and I just am not that big of a fan of doing a ton of sanding to uh, smooth out my parts, you know? So this is just like, this is kind of the best option for me, I think, because I can sort of sculpt with it and smooth and, uh, and then create more texture even if I want to. So that's gonna just kind of, like I can, cut off edges and stuff, or just kind of make like little, you'd make like little bullet holes or something if you were doing like 40K terrain or something like that, you know? That's gonna kind of rough up that texture a little bit too, cause these are supposed to be ruins. I'm using them as frost grave ruins. So that's gonna, and it fix that texture a little bit. And this is really all that you're doing when you're 3D printing is like melting plastic and then, you know, putting it into a shape. So this is the exact same thing pretty much like, just melting it and pushing it around. I'm done with the uh, wood burning tool. That's how that looks. Like you can't really see any of the lines anymore. That doesn't mean that they're not there. Um, so normally I would say spray with primer, like filler primer. Uh, that's what I'm gonna use. I'm gonna use some sandable filler primer on this stuff, but I'm not gonna actually sand it down because what sandable filler primer does is it fills up those cracks. And, um, you know, um, like, uh, but what I did with the wood burning tool, I mean, this guy in particular, like I took, I got rid of the cartoony kind of looking cracks. I got a little, there's a lot of like right angles on this guy for something that's supposed to be ruined, you know? And, um, so, um, but this, the filler primer is going to add some texture to it. So, yeah, and this guy was supposed to have right angles like by design. So, you know, I want to ruin it a little bit, kind of sculpt into it. And I can still come in here with some, with some sandpaper, you know, and kind of like uh, weather things a little bit, get rid of like any kind of hard edges, things like that. Like you can actually, you can feel it or you can, you can hear it too when it's hitting the ridges, like those kind of, uh, 3D print ridges. It has a certain like feel and sound to it. But anyways, yeah, I'm gonna take it outside and I'm going to use some automotive filler primer. This stuff. Two-in-one uh, sandable filler primer. 
So it's gonna actually fill, it's gonna fill in those little tiny cracks, but it's also gonna add a little bit of texture that you would normally sand away the top part of it. So I'm gonna put this on these guys and then I'll show you what that looks like, what the texture looks like on these guys. I'm gonna do it outside. So now after I've uh, done the, the filler primer on these guys, um, you, can, <clears throat> you can see, uh, well, you can see the texture a lot better. And normally what you would do is, you know, now you sand it again uh, and then you're gonna get those spots, those um, kind of areas that you wanna smooth out more. And, um, and then you would prime it again with the filler primer. But uh, instead of that, what I'm gonna do is um, I'm going to texture it with a little bit of uh, super fine grit sand. Um, or if you have tile grout, Tile grout would be a great way to do this. Um, but, and then I'm just gonna kind of brush it around. So I'm gonna use some watered down uh, PVA glue. <laughs> this is PVA glue, it's not Pantene. Um, I'm gonna use a little bit of watered down PVA glue and then I'm gonna paint it on there. And then I'm gonna sprinkle the sand on to get texture. And, uh, and then, but the, the primer is gonna give the PVA something to stick to. So that's, but that's going to be that kind of final layer of uh, texture on these guys that's going to give them the kind of stone look. Um, but yeah, like tile grout or like super, super fine grit sand or just keep using the filler primer and then just kind of sand it down in areas where you're not quite happy with the... Um, but you know, this will this will let you see those areas it's a little bit hard to see with like the all white PLA filament. Um, and I'm okay with having the little ridges on the top of it. <laughs> I, you know, like dark dry brushing those, that's fine. But uh, as far as like the stone stuff, I don't want that to have any of the 3D print lines in it. So yeah, I'm going to paint on some PVA first. So uh, yeah, you can see how by putting this, the, the sand texture on top of there, I've lost a lot of the fidelity of the print. Um, it's hard to see in areas like where those little stones are supposed to be defined and stuff, but that's not a bad thing with when I'm, for the look that I'm going for, because I want these to look like ruined stone. And, uh, and then on this guy, I'm even going to try and build up more texture or more of this kind of rough uh, texture in one area because that, that's where I'm going to make that into st um, snow effects later. So I'm going to have it sort of be like the wind is blowing this way and then, you know, it's sheared off this side and then it's collecting over here. So yeah, first up, I'm going to do some airbrushing and I'm just gonna uh, re reprime these guys. First up.
and uh, because I'm airbrushing, I'm not going to wait for everything to get totally bone dry. Um, if I was painting, painting with a paintbrush, you know, I would be, uh, I would make sure that my primer was super dry because you can, you know, pull up a whole chunk of paint if your primer's not dry. But since I'm airbrushing, um, I'm just gonna go over it. I'm gonna mix up a little bit of a, um, a light green, or sorry, a, a light gray, and then I'm gonna add just a little bit of this olive color to it. All right, so these guys are pretty dry, uh, dry to the touch, and dry enough to do a little bit of dry brushing. So I'm just I'm gonna go in now and I'm gonna do some uh, pigments. Um, so I'm kind of going with the same palette as like the rest of my uh, frost grave stuff. Um, just got some some different pigments that are you know kind of like earthy looking tones trying to focus my darks and my shadows. But uh, these are gonna definitely have a, um, uh, earthy looking tone to them. Cause they're all, they're basically just dry, you know, pigments that are dug out of the ground. That's where they get all of these colors. Okay, now I'm gonna do some actual dry brushing with real paint. Uh, I'm just gonna use some uh, Payne's Gray and a little bit of Titanium Buff. Oops. Um, yeah, unbleached Titanium.
Okay, now I'm gonna do something I don't normally do. I'm gonna spray lacquer on these guys to seal them. And you do, when you use the pigments, you do have to do something to seal them down because they'll come up. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'm going to seal these guys with some lacquer and then I'm gonna sprinkle some fake snow on top of them. Look at this stuff. So yeah, that's it. This is uh, how they look with another piece of my uh, modular Frostgrave terrain stuff, my modular ruins. And um, yeah, I'm super happy with them. I I love um, 3D printing, you know, 3D printing is great, but I hate like the 3D printing lines, the little, um, you know, layer lines. So if I can print a piece of terrain and then get rid of the layer lines and it looks just as good as everything that I can make by hand, then that's a huge win for me and it, uh, it fits in with all the other stuff just great. You know, no, no layer lines, no, uh, no like uh, artifacts or ghosting or any of that other 3D printing lingo stuff. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm super happy with them. So that's gonna be it. Thanks for watching. Take care of yourselves and uh, stay safe, stay healthy.